Welcome to Electron Online. Now here's quite a famous and interesting three-fourths body problem. It's not an easy one, it's pretty challenging, so let's see if we can figure it out. So the idea here is that we have a semi-sphere or a semi-spherical bowl, I should say. We have a glass rod situated in such a way that it's resting on the, on the side here and on the edge right over there. The length of the rod is exactly equal to twice the radius, which means the diameter of that semi-spherical bowl. And notice that here, this is the radius. And we're trying to find the angle at which you need to place the rod, assuming that there's no friction anywhere between the rod and the bowl. So we need to find the angle in such a way that it is balanced or that it's in equilibrium. How do we do that? Well, we need to first use a little bit of geometry. Let's uh, try that. If we continue this line right here in this direction, notice we can then see that this angle theta right here is equal to this angle theta right there. So those two are what we call alternate interior angles. If we now draw a perpendicular line from that point right there down to the rod, you can then immediately see the symmetry between this side and this side. That means this here must also be angle theta. So now we have theta there, theta there. We have some symmetry there which allows us to find the portion of the rod, which of course the length of the rod is two times the radius, we can then what portion of it is inside the bowl and what portion is then outside the bowl. We also need to find the forces. Remember, this is a three-force body, so there should be three forces involved. We have one force right here at the edge of, at the, edge of the bowl right here, pushing back against the rod, but the force will be directed perpendicular to the surface, which is on the line between the bowl here and the center point right here, which is the center of the semi-spherical bowl. So here, let's draw the force right here. Let's call this F sub A, and let's call this point A right there. So there's a force pushing in that direction. Now the second force will be right here, and that would be perpendicular to the rod. So let's call this here force at B. We'll call that point B right there. And also notice that if you draw a vertical line this way, that this angle here, theta, must be equal to those angles theta right there. Thirdly, there must also be the force of gravity pulling down on the rod. The rod has mass m. So let's just go ahead there. The rod has mass m. So now notice also that if you continue the line of action of force A in this direction, continue the line of action of force B in that direction, you can then also see Oh, that's the wrong, this, the wrong direction. Force B is going in this direction right here. So then you can see that if you draw the weight of the rod down here, that the line of action of the weight of the rod coming this way, this would be your mg, that line of action also must go to this point right there. And that would be the point where the three forces, the line of action of the three forces will cross. Now to solve this problem, we need to add the three forces together because it will form a triangle. Remember that the whole system is in equilibrium, so there's no net force. When we add the three forces together, we should get zero. So the triangle then should look something like this. So we have the, um, hmm, let's see here, let's try it this way. So here's why mg. Then we have the force B coming in this direction. Notice the angle theta right there. So there's an angle theta. There's a force B, and this angle here is theta. Then let's draw a horizontal line this way, and then we have force A this way, coming in this direction. There's force A. Now notice that this angle between the horizontal and force A, since this angle here is theta and this angle is theta, that would be an angle of 2 theta between FA and the horizontal. So this is 2 theta, this is theta, and let's make it a little bit bigger. There we go. So you can see it. So now we have ourselves a triangle. Unfortunately, it's not a right triangle, so that makes things a little bit more complicated. Now, let's try to figure out what this distance is right here. Okay. So this distance, that would be equal to the full length of the vector minus this distance right here. Now, this distance right here, let me move the mg over a little bit. So let's write, so this is mg for the the vertical vector. So this distance right here can be found by taking FB times the cosine of theta. So this here is FB times the cosine of theta. 
this side right here would be the full length, that would be mg minus fb times the cosine of theta. Now also, let's call this distance right here, let's call that distance d, and there's some relationship between fa, fb, and d. Notice that d here would be equal to the hypotenuse times the cosine of 2 theta. This d right here would be equal to this hypotenuse times the sine of theta. So we could say d is equal to fa times the cosine of 2 theta, and we could also say that d is equal to, that would be fb times the sine of theta. So obviously we could set fa of cosine of 2 theta equal to fb times the sine of theta. Notice we still have an unknown fa and an unknown fb, so is there some way that we can eliminate one of those two variables? And the answer is yes, we can. What we can do here is we can come back to point A here and sum up all the torques. So what we're going to do here is we're going to sum the moments about point A. The sum of the moments about point A, of course, must equal to zero. And let's take a look and see what contributes to that. We have the, the weight of the rod, mg, acting through this distance right here. So we can say that is equal to, this causes a negative moment because it's a clockwise direction, so that is minus mg times this distance. Let's call it d1 for now. We'll figure out what d1 is equal to, d1, plus, because now we have force b pushing in this direction, force b multiplied times this distance right here. So let's call this distance over here. Let's call that d2, and we'll worry about what d2 is in just a moment. And we know that that must add up to zero. What is D1 equal to right here? Well, D1, the weight of the rod, of course, acts through the center of mass, which means it would be half the length of the rod times the cosine of this angle. Zero is equal to minus mg. D1 is half the length of the rod times the cosine of theta. That would be L over 2. Now, of course, L over 2 would simply be 1R. That would be R times the cosine of theta plus force B times D2. Now, notice D2 can be found by saying, what is this equal to? That would be double the length of this triangle right here, of this point right here. That would be R times the cosine of theta, but there's two of them. That would be, therefore, times 2R times the cosine of theta. So that allows us to find f of b in terms of mg. Now notice we have two r cosines of theta. We have an r cosine theta here. We have an r cosine theta there. So we can divide both sides by r cosine theta. So 0 equals minus mg plus 2fb. And finally solving this for fb, we can say that fb is equal to 1 half mg. So that makes things a lot easier by knowing one of those two forces. So we can come back over here, realizing that Fb is equal to 1 half mg. We can then plug that in here, and we can say that d is equal to 1 half mg times the sine of theta, and we can say that d is equal to Fa times the cosine of 2 theta, which means, if we set those equal to each other, that Fa cosine of 2 theta is equal to 1 half mg, where are we here? Fa cosine 2 theta is equal to 1 half mg sine theta. Now there's a relationship between the cosine of theta and the sine of theta. Uh, I should say the cosine of 2 theta. We can write this as F sub A times 1 minus 2 times the sine squared of theta that's the same as the cosine of 2 theta, is equal to 1 half mg times the sine of theta. So now we have a good relationship between Fa and mg. So where do we go from there? Remember, again, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to find the angle theta, which means can we solve for the angle theta using that relationship right there? Now we realize here when we look at this bottom equation that we have two unknowns. We have the angle theta and we have f sub a. So we need to find another relationship between f sub a and 
the, the angle theta, so I go back up to my triangle right here, and now I'm noticing that F sub B, of course we found a solution for that, F sub B is equal to that, so we have mg minus F sub B is one half mg times the cosine of theta, and there's a, some way that we can relate this to F sub A to the angle two theta. And the answer is yes, because this is the opposite side to this, uh, to this angle right here, so we can say that sine of theta, or the sine of 2 theta in this case, is equal to the ratio of the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. And of course, the opposite side is equal to this, which is equal to mg, if I factor an mg, times 1 minus a half times the cosine of theta. So I'm factoring an mg out of here, that's the opposite side, divided by the adjacent side, which is f sub a which gives us the second equation we want in terms of F sub A. So if I solve this equation for F sub A, I get F sub A is equal to mg times 1 minus 1 half times the cosine of theta divided by, dropping the sine of theta, 2 theta down there, sine of 2 theta, and there's my second equation that relates F sub A in terms of theta, and here I have F sub A in terms of theta, and I can set those equal to one another. So let's try to do that. So if I solve this equation for F sub A, I get F sub A is equal to one half mg sine of theta divided by one minus 2 times the sine square of theta, and then if I set those two equations equal to each other, I've eliminated f sub a, and now I can solve for theta just using some trig identities. All right, let's do that. I'm going to set those two equations equal to each other, so I get mg times 1 minus 1 half times the cosine of theta divided by the sine of 2 theta, which is equal to one half mg sine of theta divided by one minus two times the sine square of theta. And actually, the sine of two theta can be written, I'm going to take the sine of two theta here, instead of writing on that, I'll write it as its identity, two times the sine of theta times the cosine of theta. Can we solve this for theta? Well, first of all, we can get rid of the mg's, because we divide both sides by mg, so that is eliminated. Ah, I can multiply this 2 times there, so I can multiply 2 times 1 half, so that cancels out as well. That makes it a little bit better. So I'm going to write this as follows. We have, let's factor out a 1 half. So 1 half times, that would be 2 minus 1 times the cosine of theta, makes that a little bit cleaner, times 1 minus 2 times the sine square of theta, when I bring this over here, equals the sine of theta times the cosine of theta times the sine of theta would be the sine squared of theta times the cosine of theta. Now let's multiply out what we have here and see what we get. So this is equal to, bring the 2 over there, so we have 2 times 1, so f2 minus 4 times the sine square of theta minus the cosine of theta. Multiply this times that, that gives me plus 2 times the sine square of theta times the cosine of theta equals, and when we bring the, the 2 from here over to the other side, we get 2 times the sine square of theta times the cosine of theta. Wow. For a while there, we thought we're not going to get anywhere with this, but luckily, notice that on both sides of the equation, we have a 2 times sine squared theta cosine theta, which means this cancels out with that, and all of a sudden the problem becomes a whole lot easier. What we have left is the following. 2 minus 4 times the sine square of theta minus the cosine of theta is equal to 0. Now at this point, we would be stuck unless we all of a sudden realize we can probably turn this into a quadratic equation. Remember the identity, we have the sine square of theta 
plus the cosine square of theta equals 1, which means that we can write the sine square of theta as 1 minus the cosine square of theta. Plug that in here and see what we get. So we have 2 times, or 2 minus 4 times, the sine square of theta can be written as 1 minus the cosine square of theta minus the cosine of theta equals 0. And simplifying this a little bit more, so we multiply this times this, we get 4 times the cosine square of theta minus 4 plus 2, that would be, or in a minus cosine of theta. And here we have a minus 4 plus 2, or minus 2, equals 0. And now we have ourselves a quadratic equation that we can solve for the cosine of theta. And so what we can then say is, we can say that the cosine of theta is equal to minus b, which is minus 1 plus or minus, oh, that would be plus 1, because minus a minus 1 is a plus 1, plus or minus the square root of b squared, that would be 1 squared, which is 1, minus 4 times a times c, which is a minus 2, all divided by 2a, that would be divided by 8. Okay, simplifying this a little bit more, this is equal to 1 plus or minus the square root of, so this minus cancels out with that minus, that would be 16 times 2, that's 32 plus 1, which is 33, divided by 8. And finally, we can say, therefore, that, notice that we cannot use the negative, it's better to use the positive answer. I guess we could use a negative, but let's go ahead and use the positive answer here. So we have the cosine of theta is equal to 1 plus the square root of 33 divided by 8. So therefore, theta is equal to the arc cosine of 1 plus the square root of 33 divided by 8. And finally, we can find the angle of that problem with a calculator. So we take the square root of 33 add 1 to that, divide by 8, and finally we take the inverse cosine and the angle is 32.5 degrees. Wow, that's quite a problem and quite a set of different tricks that we need to use to solve the problem. But again, we start with a semispherical bowl, we put a glass rod into the bowl, there's no friction anywhere so the glass rod will slide back and forth until it stops in an equilibrium point. We then realize there's three forces involved, F at A, the weight, and F at B. We can draw a triangle there, and then notice we have to find a relationship between FB and MG, which we did. And then we have to find a relationship between FA and the angle theta, which we realize we now have two equations. When we set the two equations equal to each other, we now have an equation with only theta, and then through a series of tricks, we're able to turn into a quadratic equation, solve for the quadratic equation, and take the inverse cosine to find the angle. Wow, that's quite a problem, but if you're ever faced with this problem, you're stuck with it, here's some very good hints of how to go about solving it, and that's how we do that.